the capital of Bavaria. The northernmost city of Italy is one of the nicknames of the metropolis. The city's charm, beauty and lifestyle are unique. Just like the fifth season, the world-famous Oktoberfest. Or the impressive Victualien Markt in the heart of the city of dreams. For five years now, Shane's restaurant is part of the culinary delights of Munich. The crossover cuisine by Shane McMahon has a unique philosophy. The 44-year-old chef with Irish-Austrian roots reinvents himself day by day. Yeah, my philosophy now here in the restaurant is um, having a restaurant with a surprise menu as the customers don't know what they're going to get. Um, that is for me, I came onto that one because first of all I came here, the situation where the restaurant is situated is in the butcher part of the town, they call it in German the Schlachthofviertel and it's actually between five minutes distance from the markets. So what I do is I get up early in the morning with the boys sometimes or I go on my own and I buy what the market gives me and I'm talking from herbs to fruit to vegetables to fish to game whatever and I actually said at the start when I opened up the restaurant will I go for a la carte or will I go for a menu and I actually ended up going for two but then some of the, the customers maybe on a Friday night they all wanted the a la carte and the Saturday night they all wanted a menu and it kind of screwed me up so I said listen it's either one or the other and I haven't looked back and I've been five years here just doing the surprise menu but it's a bit of a battle because you have to surprise the customers every time. It sounds funny but I've, I've went to the market with some of the, well of course the cooks in the kitchen and some friends as well and my wife and they say you know it's, it's definitely a gift but it's actually what I say it's, it's, it's my own repertoire in my head that I can look at asparagus and I can say wow that looks beautiful and then I can go to the fishmonger and say wow he's got white torbot and he's got whatever cockles or, or lamb and then I combine knowing that the artichoke and the paprika and the basil and the rosemary and the thyme will fit for that lamb and also knowing that that lovely white asparagus will fit for the torbot so it's all experience it's it's definitely um, it's definitely, I would say, it's a work of art that you have, to, you have to have it. It's passion. Come on, have a look in the kitchen. So here's the kitchen. Um, it's quite big as well for the size of Munich. I mean, Munich is an expensive plaster, but um, it's big enough for what we do. Um, Franz and Flo here are making raviolis for tonight. This is uh, the, pa the pasta dish that will be done with um, pork pie filling and garlic chive taig dough. And that will be on top tonight with um, a spätzle from garlic chive. And spätzle is a typical German dish for Schwaben. And um, yeah, that, that's also time consuming as well to make every sort of tortellini look the very same and uh, he's got about two or three batches of them tonight so that'll be it's also one of the type of dishes that the people love you know because it's not too much hocus pocus but it's lovely like I said it's very very tasty um, France is an apprenticeship and Flo here is an Austrian you have to have an you always have to have an Austrian in the kitchen you know uh -huh. and um, as we can see here I got my hair is standing because I love the likes of this. This is uh, Atlantic Torbud and it's just absolute fresher. You cannot get it. And Christian is going to fill it that tonight. And um, hopefully, if we have enough customers tonight, we'll sell that in one night. And um, What, he, what, he's actually, what's, what he's actually doing here is very important. He's filleting carefully the fish that costs a lot of money if he slips his hand and digs right into the fillet. And um, also what's very important here is the way he portions the fish. That the fish has to be exact gram to gram and not a big piece and not a small piece because we chefs have to calculate down to a T otherwise we're going to be on the street after whatever. Perfect. Doesn't even smell like fish. 
doesn't, should not smell and this is just absolutely perfect. You can see my hair is still standing and like, love it. And here also it's what's quite important for our kitchen as well. We go from season to season and we're very local as well. We, we try our best to be organic. And what we've got here is rhubarb. And I used to love rhubarb when I was a kid. My, my grandmother used to always do the rhubarb tart and stuff like that. And she never screwed it up. So that means that's why I still like it. And Philip is our man here for the, for the rhubarb. And what he's done here, he's done a lovely reduction from um, gooseberries and sugar and vanilla and stuff like that and hot on top and then he's going to whack it in the oven and to make it nice and tender but not too overcooked and that'll be on the dessert tonight yeah and then over here this is also something that is quite nice to do as well um, this is a daikon radish terrine, which is going to be served tonight with uh, tuna fish, um, shiitake mushrooms, and, um, or not shiitake mushrooms, I'm mixing up myself um, with um, avocado cream and a fila cress. So here's also, here's also, I mean, it's, it's like very important in the kitchen. It's waste not, want not. So Flo is like used out of the rest of the dough from the noodles. He's made a lovely uh, fettuccine, so it's perfect. So he's also got a dish on the side tonight. If somebody doesn't, doesn't like any fish, he can make a lovely pasta. Perfect. Well done. Yes. <laughs> and what's very important as well, we've got, um, Thomas here, and Thomas, he doesn't look like a sommelier at the moment, <laughs> but he is, and he's very, very, he's a FC Bayern fan, but it's very, very important because he's very talented also with putting the dishes and the wines together. Corresponding wines in this house is probably sold, I would say, an average of about 80%, yeah, which is top, and he's doing a good job. Well, my first experience with cooking was I was about 12 years of age and after school my parents being in hectic in the kitchen I had to throw my school bag in the corner which I gladly did so and I was uh, taught how to chop parsley and peel scampies and peel potatoes and stuff like that. That was my first experience. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to fry a veal tomahawk cut, which is really, really nice cut, perfect for the likes of a barbecue in summer. So the most important thing here is to make sure that the meat itself is room temperature. Um, it's actually stored, of course, about three degrees and by the time it hits the pan, it should have about, say, whatever, 20, 25 degrees. So here we go. Just put it in the hot pan. And of course, just let it fry on its own. Don't try to turn it over or move it around because first of all, it has to get that roasting effect and then it will um, come off the, on its own, yeah? So I'll wait here patiently for about two to three minutes. So 
So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to put it right on top here in the big green egg. Now you're probably wondering why is he frying it in the pan and why didn't he put it straight on here. I want to do a safe number. I don't want to put it on raw here and just in case it sticks. So what I've done, I've sealed everything. So what's going to happen now, it's just here on top of the egg and it's going to get that really sort of a barbecue feeling, smell and taste to it. Beautiful. So what I'll do now is just have a look, just turn it around, you can see that light rust from the grill already on the meat, it looks fantastic. Now I'm going to just turn it around again and I'm going to shut down the dome and I'm going to have that air heat circulation and I can just got about what, 200 degrees at the moment which is perfect and I'll leave that patiently for about three to four minutes, yeah? So now, we're nearly at the finish. Looking really, really good. Pan is nice and hot, a little bit too much oil inside there, take a little bit out. Like I said, a bit of oil and butter. Doesn't burn so fast. Just another drop inside. Take the steak out, put it in. Get those beautiful rosemary and sage in top. Then I'm gonna put some fresh garlic inside. Just sit it up there. And like I said, just make sure we get that sort of nutty brownish butter on top. And just keep on doing that and you get the really beautiful taste of these herbs with that meat. And if you look at the color from the way it is, it's just beautiful, yeah? So now I'll take it over here. So the most, most important thing right now is, is to take the meat or the steak out of the pan or away from the grill, but don't cut it straight away because the juices have to stay inside. And if I cut it straight away, the juice is just gonna flow out like a river. So what I've done is I've um, waited actually that one to two minutes, and I'm gonna take a really small slice and just see how it is. And it feels perfect, and it's absolutely perfect, yeah? It's a sort of a medium rare, juicy. You can see in the outsides, just put a little bit of salt on top. Always from the side that you cut it, a little bit of salt. I'm going to taste that meat and see how it is. Beautiful. Perfect. We, what we're doing now is actually a dish that we just more or less sort of created this morning and um, with a bit of um, Wagyu beef, a bit of uh, really braised Radicchio Trevisiano going back to, from the American beef to the Italian perfect vegetable and a bit of shaven, shaven uh, trifles on top with some um, perilia and um, old, old sorted carrots, purple carrots, yeah? So what we're doing now is just basically, like I, like I said earlier on, the dishes that are like one, two, three. So we're just going to put the braised radicchio trevisiano first of all on the plate. Then a little bit of the carrot puree. Inside here is a reduction from um, balsamico, port wine, Madeira, and demi glass. And then the carrot is more or less naturally. And here is a bit of Japanese perilla. Just wet it. Make it give it a bit of an interesting note. Throw some of a few sakura leaves on top, which is also automatically come into the combination of the type, type of Japanese 
European type dish, yeah? Here we have the meat perfectly fried. But you have to, first of all, you have to have a feeling and you also have to have experience, which the boys behind me have because they're actually giving me the dishes. So there's no, um, there's not too much confusion that I'm not sending back dishes and saying, hey, come on, cook it up again. But as you can see, like I always said, we got a, com uh, a dish here with like three ingredients that are already finished. To shave the truffle out right now on top makes it just a very, very interesting. And it's also from the combination, a sort of a dish where I would say it's, it's gonna go down well. Okay. Well, it's, 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 it's getting easier nowadays because we have the sous vide. So we can put that chunk of meat in with one kilo, vacuumed with different herbs and spices, whatever way we want to marinate it into a sous vide with um, degrees between up to 56 degrees up to about four to five hours and then we taste it to see if it's tender enough and I'm actually a fan from meat that should be a bit chewy but not tough and then to sear it off and give it that roast and give that sort of smoky taste to it it's over the grill so the first process is done beforehand and the service time is to give it that whack and put it over the egg and get the, the, the vegetables going. So it's all, as you could feel and see, it's all preparation. So we could send out 50 of these guys tonight without a doubt. As you can see, we've got the filled paprikas with couscous and zucchini and spicy and tomato. So here we have the Atlantic Torbot um, with the um, shiitake mushrooms, also a bit of cauliflower and Chinese cabbage. And this is also definitely our handwriting. So that goes off to table 10. Also very light, but it's suits well the springtime or even the summertime. I could imagine a dish like that out in the garden, 30 degrees, nice glass of wine, bingo. It's also a bit of a bitch because um, it's the first table that's been a bit different and the guy has his own Michelin star, so his wife doesn't eat raw fish. So it's a bit of a, uh-uh, you know? What we're gonna put here is a little bit of pea puree with a light touch of mint and a note of wasabi. And then we put the scampi that looks kind of freaky on top. And there we go, and you can hear them crunching and, you know, so it's uh, also a bit of new style. Put a little bit of the glaze of yuzu over the terrine. Well, it's actually, um, it's actually hard sometimes, but you have to be motivated because your customers are coming in. They're to a certain extent pay paying top dollar. They have to more or less sit down and have to choose a four course up to five, six to eight courses. They can actually go further and they are actually putting the pressure on and they have a right to put the pressure on. They're coming in, they're sitting down and they want to have the first course between the Amis Bush, the entrees and 
the main courses, if it's, if it's pasta or risotto or whatever. Um, and we've got a lot of locals, and those locals want to be impressed and surprised every time they come. And it's exceeding, yes. There's no difference. I just said to Philip, you know, it's such a beautiful dish, and we're, we don't, we don't, um, we're not concentrated just on fish or meat or game or whatever. I don't want the guys to hide the beautiful vegetables, so I just asked him to place the fish a little bit down below, and it looks better. So here, here as, you can, as you can see here, we have the lamb shoulder that has been sous vide, but as we say, it's um, reversed. So we're actually frying the meat after it's cooked. And sous vide makes it really, really tender, but we don't do all the meat to um, sous vide. But the most important thing is here to give it that grilling over the big green egg afterwards. And you really do have a feeling that you're probably in Greece or in Turkey, sitting in a super restaurant out in the terrazza and having lamb from an open grill. And that's the effect that we get off this egg. Well, temperature is always on the egg, has to be, has to be quite fast. What we're trying to do is, we're trying to sear the meat really, really fast. So at the moment we've got 300 degrees here, we'll be hitting 300 up to 400 degrees. So it's actually warm, it's got about 50 degrees inside. So all it's gonna need is about three or four minutes and then it's gonna be perfect. Well, it's quite simple. What it concerns the kitchen is the food has to be tasty. Tasty, 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 point. I'm talking like I, I don't have the time or I don't have the, the discipline to do all that boom, boom on the plate with she, she but it has to be like one, two, three, and it has to be looking good. It has to be fresh, and like I said, tasty. So what we got here is also for the hotel guests or people that like to eat in the lounge without having um, a big, big menu. And we got here just pasta of the day, so we're actually picking the pasta dish from the menu and making it bigger for the lounge, so. So what I'm doing here is uh, this is our pasta dish, um, this seafood ravioli with garlic chive and garlic chive spätzle, a little bit of a tomato to give it a bit of a kick and champagne foam to round it over and it's beautiful. I love the raviolis in this house, the boys do fantastic raviolis. So this is the, the actually nice finishing of the menu. This is our dessert tonight. We have here a type of a New York, New York cheesecake with um, rhubarb, with air chocolate, vanilla ice cream, and a small little, very, very mini macaroon dots. There you go. Oh, I'm definitely living my dreams, yeah. I mean, um, I mean, come on, I mean, cooks that can just open up their drawers and chop this and make lovely sauces and just not even knowing actually during the day how it's going to be placed and presented on the plate and that's a, that's a fantastic way to be able to cook and not having like okay the lobster bisque with whatever and you have to have that because the customer is reading that and he's looking at the price and he's saying hey but um what about those beans that are missing or what about the knockies? Um, I didn't have them. But I'm not trying to say that we're not doing a fair play. We're just being more creative. And actually, I think it's a lot better. 